Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Go With Your Gut podcast. I am your host, Lauren Dreher, and today we have the privilege of speaking with Elise Smith, and she is the owner of Divinely Driven Results, which is a Christian-based business consulting company. She is also the host of Divinely Driven Results podcast. And guys, I can tell you from personal experience that she is passionate about what she does. So Lise, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks so much, Lauren. Yeah, so I am uh, Elise Smith. I live in Utah. Um, I am married to my husband. Actually, one week from today, it'll be 15 years. So that, that's pretty cool. Uh, and we have a cute little pup son who we've named Spike, even though he's just a little furball. Uh, no kids yet from God, um, but we are hoping um, for our miracle soon. So, uh, and then I'm also the uh, Christian business strategist at Divinely Driven Results. We have an amazing team of coaches to be able to empower Christian women entrepreneurs to be able to reach their sales goals that God has put on their heart. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So I know, I know a little bit about maybe some of this because we've chatted about it before, but I am very curious to hear your deeper take on that pivotal moment that made you decide to go with that gut and make it happen because I know you've had a, a lot going on in your life and business and everything. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I was talking to my husband about this the other night and we have these moments in life where things change after that moment. Right. And there's, there's not very many. I mean, I think that so many people are talking about like, you know, there's the before and the after. And I think I have like three events in my whole life that this happened. <laughs> and this is one of them. So, you know, several years ago, my husband and I, we were in a network marketing company and we attended this event. Uh, they call it edutainment so that you get, you know, you get to see a skit um, being performed and then you apply it to your business, which I thought was just super fun. I love those events. Yeah. Um, and uh, what has, what would, how was happening for me at that time is, I was just not making any sales. I was not growing my business and I did not know what was going on. And I was so frustrated and I watched this skit happen in front of me. And this guy, every single time that he looks at his, his reflection in the mirror or a screen or anything like that, he's just yelling at himself, all of these terrible things. Like you're a failure. You're never going to amount to anything. No one cares about you. You, you know, all these terrible things that honestly we see in our head where we think no one else years, yep. right? Like we are meaner to ourselves sometimes than we would be to anyone on earth, even our own worst enemy, right? Absolutely. Oh, it's so sad. And so, you know, for the first time I realized that that's how I was speaking to myself in my mind where no one else could hear, which is not true because God's probably up there saying like, stop doing that to yourself, girl. Right. <laughs> and so, um, so I just, my huggy, he was looking around the room and everyone was laughing and having a good time. Cause apparently it was pretty funny. And he looks over at me and I am ugly crying, just completely oh. losing it. Like tears streaming down my face, snot coming out my nose. Like, I mean, it's just awful because for the first time I heard what I was actually saying in my head and it made me so incredibly sad. I mean, no wonder I wasn't getting the results that I was looking to gain because I was fighting myself every single day. And so that's where inner dream stealer came from. This concept of that voice inside your head that tells you that you're not good enough is really what it boils down to. And so in that moment, I went back to the hotel with my hubby and, and we you know, sat down and I said, I've got to do something about this. And this was many years ago, like five years ago. And I decided to start a blog. I'd never done anything like that before. And I started my inner dream stealer blog. Um, and, uh, and it kind of just went from there where it became a coaching business because I wanted to empower women to be able to take back the power that they have as a daughter of God to turn down that voice that tells them they're not good enough and step into the reality of who they are as that daughter of God. I love how you worded that because, and you know, from just us chatting that it is so crazy that I've kind of had, I've had that same thing. And we have this, as you said, this thing in our brain that is that subconscious thing that it seems we don't even know is there. Mm -hmm. And it's that 
like recurring who knows where it comes from whether it be somebody outside whether it be the mean guy downstairs or whatever that is but it's so weird that you can hear something so many times and people can tell you over and over everything that you need to know but all of a sudden at you know that specific time it seems we hear that thing and that light bulb goes off and it's just like oh my gosh like mm-hmm. how did i not see that like and it, i mean for me i remember it was just like that gut drop and you have that that gut drop that big knot you're just like that's it that mm-hmm. is why that's why I can't move forward. And that, I mean, nobody wants that slap in the face. Nobody wants that reality check, but it, it is strong. And I mean, you obviously just made that sound exactly how it was for me too. Um, So I'm curious when you went through that, that is such a process to go through internally. What was that process like for you to go through that in your head and have to start working through that? Because that's so much internal programming that we do to -hmm. ourselves a little bit. That's hard to work through. How did that look for you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, in the moment it was like your whole world crashes down around you, you know, like you almost don't even see like the light at the end of the tunnel because you're like, well, if I've done this for years, how in the world am I supposed to change? And the fact of the matter is, is that, like you said, it's the programming, like from our childhood, it could be our parents or school or, you know, just things that we pick up all the time. Cause we're like little sponges as we grow up. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, we can't really blame ourselves too much for that, but then there's also the adversary, like there's Satan that is trying to, and that's why I call it your inner dream stealer, trying to steal away your dreams. And if we listen to that voice, you really will, but it is a process because in that moment, you have to realize that that's what's happening. Like I, you know, I mean, I, gosh, I was like, I don't know, 30 years old or something when that happened. And, you know, to look back on that and say my whole life, I didn't realize I could control my emotions or my thoughts. I honestly felt like you had to play damage control for whatever came out. That was crazy. Like, I don't know why they don't like teach that in schools or hopefully they do now, who knows? But, um, but I, I think it starts with awareness, like being aware of what your thoughts and your feelings are really doing because they're powerful. And Mm -hmm. then taking that to the Lord and saying, okay, you know, almost the, the repentance process, but in a good way, repentance, meaning to improve as opposed to, you know, say you're sorry for something that you've done, but more of taking taking ownership of, yes, I have allowed myself to think these thoughts and feel these feelings. But now that I know better, now that I know that I can do that, I am going to try to do better and asking the Lord for his help. And then, you know, he has given me some different tools along the path to be able to really empower myself and choose what I want to think and what I want to feel. And believe me, I'm not perfect at this by any stretch of the means. I was working on this yesterday, but it is a journey. And that's the thing is all we, all we can do is be aware and just continually strive for improvement. Again, worded so wonderfully because I've had, I know what you're talking about with that. And, and I feel like unless you have started to recognize that process and start to work through it, it's almost, I always describe it as I was so conflicted internally because I didn't, I didn't quite understand how to work through that. And it's like, okay, I have this big, I have this big black thing in my head that I need to go away. I don't know how to do it exactly. Mm -hmm. And people choose many different ways, but I, and I know that you do this a lot. Obviously you are a Christian based business, but all of these things for me, and I don't know how much you agree with me or not. um, I had this moment of 
this is so big and overwhelming in my head. Like I have, I had no choice, but to say, just like you, I'm going to take this to God because I, I don't know how to go through this. And I feel like every, we are so hard on ourselves as individuals that it's this thing of, we notice that, but then we just start beating ourselves up with it. Right. Instead of, Mm -hmm. instead of saying, okay, great. This is what it is. I've had this whole lifetime of buildup and now I know it. Now I can acknowledge it and figure out how to work through it. I know that I'm going to I know I'm going to take it to God. I know I'm going to let him help me with this because that's the only way I'm going to get through it. And honestly, sometimes it takes me multiple times a day to have to quiet that and say, I, I can't do this. I can't do it on my own and working through all that and be able to surrender that. I know a lot of people say it feel like that's a cheesy word, but I feel like it's such a great yeah. concept. And I think it's interesting because so many people, I think, just go into this self-destructive mode instead of saying, now it's time for him to help me work on it. So trying to think of how to word this. So I feel like that's when, for me anyway, some of, it was so hard to start working on. That's when I started all of those excuses. Can you relate to that at all? Yeah. Um, this mm-hmm. is so big that I don't have the time. I don't have, like, I, I just mentally don't feel like I can do this. Tell me what that was like for you. Yeah, definitely. And, and I want to kind of touch on just something you said just a minute ago is that there is that, that breaking point, right? That moment where we hit our knees and say, God, I can't do this. And in that moment, even though it feels like things are crashing down around you and you're never going to be able to fix it and all these terrible things that you think in your head, right? That Satan is trying to convince you to just give up before you even start is that God wants our hearts right? That's what he wants. He wants our hearts. And so in the moment where we feel like we don't have anything left and we're just asking God for help, that's the moment where we get the most clarity. That's the moment when we get the most peace and the most hope. Because if we focus on how big of a mountain we have to climb, we're never going to take the first step. And so the hope of being able to change, and I believe that that, that change because you know, it came from the fact that Christ, you know, atoned for our sins and that he, you know, was resurrected and all of those things, like his atonement has helped me to be able to change. And so regardless of how terrible things may feel in the moment, it's holding on to hope when all other hope seems completely gone. And that's why we find ourselves on our knees in those moments. Yes, it would be great to partner with God the whole way through, right? (laughs) And not just use him as a catastrophic consultant as sometimes we do. Um, But really to be able to have that moment of complete surrender, like you said, the word surrender is so beautiful. And I love the fact that you used it because that is us giving our heart over to the Lord and he takes it and he makes us into so much better people than we could possibly do on our own. So I think just really leaning into that hope and even having a desire to hope, taking it to the Lord and knowing that, yeah, it's a mountain that does need to be climbed. And it's probably a lifelong process right, to, <laughs> to climb that mountain. You're never going to get to the top and be like, yes, I'm perfect as far as like in this life, <laughs> but yeah. that's okay. It is about the things that we learn along the way and the people who we become in the process through Christ's help. Cause we really can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Absolutely. And, you know, it, it kind of, you just touched on this a little bit. What I have found is I feel like a lot of people use that relationship with God as a wishing well Mm -hmm. of like, you know, okay, you, you get up and you pray in the morning or whatever. And it's a, please give me this, please give me this. I, I'm struggling so much. I need this to work. 
please do this for me. And almost like, you know, we're begging somebody, right? Mm -hmm. When I have found that it's, I mean, yeah, we, we all go and ask him for big things and we all hear, okay, you know, pray boldly, all that kind of stuff, but it's going with that inner gut intuition of learning how to, how he talks to you, first of all, because that's a whole different skill in itself. Mm -hmm. And it happens in different ways for everybody, mm. but it's the, okay, you have to actually move forward with those hard things. You have to work through those hard things and take those big steps and move through the fear of whatever is in your head and whatever the things that you're afraid of. It's different for everybody, but he's going to give us stuff to do. And it's going to, I mean, it's terrifying. Let's be real. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's moving through that, taking that action and trusting that, okay, when the time is right, those big actions are going to be those stepping stones. And it's not a, can I please have this relationship? It's a, I'm going to trust what you're throwing in front of me, whether it looks how I thought it would or not, because I'm sure you might agree with this, where I thought it was going, like the end goal is still the same, but it's nowhere near where I thought I'd be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real hard pill to swallow a lot because we, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because I've gotten, I used to be so ingrained of the bigger picture of what I wanted the process to look like that I was just like, no, I'm not going there. Cause that's not where I thought I was going. And we get to the end result somehow but it's through what we think we want to do, not what he thinks we should do or what he's giving us. So yeah. what has that looked like for you? Yeah. And I love the idea of like that wishing well kind of God, right? Is that we don't even realize we do it sometimes. I mean, think about the prayers that we say is like, okay, God, please help me with this or give me this or do this or whatever. And, you know, with something I teach in divinely driven results is really partnering with God, almost creating a contract with God, because mm -hmm. it's not just when we make God our CEO, he becomes our chief everything officer, right? And we put all the onus on him. And then if something fails, we get mad at God. But we are partners in this relationship, whether it's uh, in our businesses or our lives, we get to co-create with God. And so one of the most amazing things to do when it comes to that is to ask God a specific question. So instead of saying, God, please bless me with more clients or help me to you know, have a good day or whatever it might be, then ask him, what can I do to have a good day today? Or what can I do to gain more clients? Because then your brain is automatically looking for those answers anyway. It actually, you know, gets your reticular activating system and your brain actually functions yes. so you can see those answers. But then you also have your will aligned with God where you guys are working together instead of putting everything on God. He's not the wishing well God anymore. He's literally your partner in co-creating what you want to have. And that just becomes so powerful. So I'd encourage anyone who's listening, maybe tweak your prayer just a little bit and ask a specific question of God. Because if we ask a general question, like a need or a want, we'll get a general answer. But if we ask a specific question, we get a specific answer. And yeah, that answer may not always be what we want, just like you were talking <laughs> about. Uh, my hubby says, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans for the future. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, because I mean, I've, I've definitely, like I said, I we don't have any kids yet. And we've been trying for 14 years now. Oh. And, and it's just been very difficult. Like I thought I months after getting married, I'd have babies and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and, you know, but my life is exactly where it's meant to be. And I want whoever is listening to this to realize that and to really be grateful for that. Your life is exactly what it's meant to be right now. All your challenges, all your struggles, all the amazing things that are happening that's exactly where you're meant to be, to have the best growth and to serve the most people. I love that. So 
that leads me right to where I wanted to go in that timing and those kind, a little bit of roadblocks, I guess, because oh, I, I, you just mentioned, and I was talking about a little bit earlier is like, it doesn't look how we thought it would. And I, it seems that we get so frustrated and that's where we want to quit. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter, like you said, whether it be personal or business, whatever it is, we get so frustrated with the process and it's just like, okay, this is not happening how I thought it would. It's not happening how I want when, yeah, it's not our call. We can do whatever we want. And there's been many things that I've even tried to force. Cause I'm like, I will make this happen. I will do this. Everybody tells me not to give up. Everybody tells me to keep going. I'm keeping going, but I have found, and what releases that anxiety that I have about it. And that frustration is saying, I am going to keep going no matter what, because I feel in my core that this is where I'm meant to go. However, I will also keep that open mind and say, okay, what does it look like this week? Here's have those goals, have those in things of here's where I want to get because, you know, whatever reason, whether that fire is lit in your soul, whether whatever has changed, Mm -hmm. but it's being open to what those things look like. Because good gosh, I can tell you, none of that has come at me like I thought it would. Mm -hmm. And honestly, sometimes I've shoved it out because I'm like, yeah, this is not right. This is too good to be true. Or it's come back at me through not bridges that have been burned, but through people I have been in my life in the past that I didn't expect. Have you found any of that to be true for you? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, it kind of makes me think about the scripture of like man deviseth the plan, but the Lord guides our steps, right? It is so important for us to have goals and to have dreams and to have things that we're working towards. I mean, just because, you know, we want to make God laugh to, you know, tell him our plans for the future. <laughs> he does want us to have plans for our future, right? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it kind of makes me think about our fertility journey is that We've, we've now done 10 IUIs. Nothing has ever taken. We just did our, our first IVF and that failed a couple months ago, which was extremely, extremely hard. We still have hope. We still know there are children up there for us. So we're, we've got some good news of things that I think are coming down the pike, but, but, you know, there was that moment where I, I had to just surrender it to the Lord, you know, like I, this is my plan for the future. I want to have a baby. And the thing about goals is that it puts you on the path that God wants you to be on, right? If God put a goal in your heart, which I think goals and dreams come from heavenly father, you know, there's a reason why he put that goal in your heart. And what's amazing is, is that you might think it takes you to path B when actually just you being on path B to get to your goal will take you to path C and that will open up and it wouldn't have opened up any other way. So when we were going through all these fertility treatments, um, we found out that I have Crohn's disease in the process and I've had stomach aches my entire life. And I didn't even know that you could fix that. Right. And so they put me on a medication because of my Crohn's and I was able to get better and fix a lot of other things in my life. Now, I don't know if that would have actually happened if, or at least in that timing, if I wasn't on that path for fertility. So even though I didn't get the end result yet, cause I'm super hopeful about that. Um, even though I haven't gotten the end result that I want yet is put me on paths to be able to connect with other women who are struggling with fertility problems or to be able to have, you know, a testimony of God being with me, even in the moments where you feel like giving up all those things really are for our own experience and our own good to help us and to help other people as well. You know, I, I feel like I need to kind of join you on that. I've, I've struggled with this as well. And actually that journey for me was actually where I very first learned to surrender all the way. Mm -hmm. Um, and 
it took somebody else to tell me that because I, I was so in my head, I was so worried. And it was somebody telling me, my mother, in fact, that said, okay, Lauren, you can't do anything about this. You've done everything that you can. Mm -hmm. Trust that God's working through the doctors. He's working through everything else. Pray that he works through them and then let him take over. And that was the first time because like, I was so at that point of, I literally can't do anything else. I have to sit and wait and wait for results. And that was the first time that I was just like, okay, here we go. I, and fortunately mine went well. I'm very sorry that yours has not been the same, but it was that thing of, yeah, I'm, I've done everything I can. Now let's let him take over. But that was the first time that huge light bulb in my head clicked of, oh, we can get big results from this relationship. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. All right. Well, it, we are about to wrap up. So one thing I wanted to ask you if what would you tell anybody listening about just learning to trust your intuition and go with that gut feeling just in general, what would you tell people? Yeah. There's two voices I think that come up, right? The first voice is like, go do this or, you know, whatever that first prompting is. Then there's the second voice that comes in that says, no, 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 you can't do that. Like there's no way. Right. And it's so important to always listen to that first voice and act upon that first voice. There is a reason why you've been given that. And I don't, I don't care if you're religious or spiritual or anything like that, you know, that first voice for sure. And so it's, there's a reason to act upon that. And you never know what kind of impact you can make just by doing that. Um, you know, just a real quick story. I had a friend who, um, had just served in the army, um, over and he was just really, really having a hard time. And my roommate and I, at the time when I was in college, we felt impressed to bring him flowers, bring a guy flowers, like, <laughs> weird, right. Like totally weird, but we're like, you know what? We need to bring him flowers. Yeah. And, um, and it was amazing because we got the flowers and we brought them over to him and he was having the hardest night of his life that night. And he, you know, was seriously considering taking his own life. And we showed up with the flowers and he just cried. And it was just the most amazing, beautiful thing. And, and I think about that every time I hear that first voice, that first prompting, you never know what kind of impact you can have by following that voice for you or for other people. So I think just knowing that second voice is going to come too, just like yep. we've been talking about this whole time. But if you listen to that first voice, you'll never go wrong. I absolutely agree. And honestly, like I, I'm horrible about second guessing myself. Unfortunately, I'm getting better, but it's so crazy that how true that is, because like, like you said, there will always be that voice that comes in and says, yeah, no, not good enough. Can't do it, but this is too hard. But one in one thing that I will close with that I have learned time and time again is God will not give you something that you cannot handle because I feel all the time that I'm like, this is too much. Heck, my life right now is insane. And I'm, and I told myself that all the time I say, he wouldn't give this to you if you can, couldn't handle it. So keep going, prove that you can do it, prove to yourself that you can do it because that gut feeling is there for a reason. All right, everybody. Well, Elise, thank you so much for being on here with me today. It was great talking to you. Tell everybody real quick how they can find you. Absolutely. So uh, you can always go to my website, divinelydrivenresults.com. We also have a free Facebook group for Christian women entrepreneurs in the service-based industries to be able to grow their business in the Lord's way as opposed to the world's way. So that's free and it's called Faithful Ladypreneurs. So check us out on divinelydrivenresults.com and Faithful Ladypreneurs Facebook group. All right. Thank you. 
everybody, thank you for listening. And as always, go with your gut and then keep going. Talk to you next time.